Hey, spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Civilization VI. Now, I recently went on a hunt for a really powerful start location as Poundmaker, because I've just been, I've just been kind of, somebody suggested that I should play the Cree, and I kind of got hungry for it. And I thought it would be kind of fun if we also tried out a new map script, like this Got Lakes map script here. Now, I've never used it before, so, gee, what is actually, oh my god, <laughs> what? Okay, I'm gonna have to go like look up how to actually use this. This is too many options. I'm scared. I'll be honest with you guys, I have absolutely no idea what any of this means. So I'm just gonna set everything to random. Close my eyes. <laughs> okay, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna close my eyes <laughs> and uh let Jesus take the wheel here. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea what's gonna happen. We're gonna play without game modes here. Because this is already a little bit too chaotic for me. Um, <laughs> let's make sure we set it to deity. Yeah, the, the goal here is to play an abundant legendary start location. And I wanted to... Try, I thought this was just like a, a map script. But apparently it's like a totally insane... Like, I, I don't even know what to say. I need to go look at a tutorial properly on how to use this map script. So we're just going to load it to a map randomly. And hope that it works. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What is this? This is like the weirdest start location I've ever seen in the history of playing Civ. Like, I have no idea how to interpret this. Um, <laughs> we, we have dives. It's a 2-2-1 phase tile. This is incredible, actually. Um, now, the big problem we have is our Mequaps can't go in floodplains. But do we even care? Um, I feel like settling in place here is pretty reasonable. We'll get a 2-2 tile to work. We'll... We're settling on a weak tile. It's far from ideal, but we do get at least, right, there is a farm triangle over here. You know, if we kind of plan things out a little bit, there's a farm triangle here at the very least. And we've also got a plantation. Potentially, we could go plantation pantheon. There are two more plantations within range of the city, which is a really good early game gold. So this is starting to maybe kind of appeal to me like a little bit in that sense. And I think, I think settling in place here is the move. Um, and kind of thinking about our opening move here, perhaps, hear me out, some kind of pottery into irrigation play could follow, which would potentially be like early builder. Uh, maybe not builder first, because pottery into irrigation is kind of like a weird opener, but definitely maybe like builder second or third. Maybe like instead of, but the thing about the Cree is you, you definitely want to get like two to three scouts as the Cree, because their scouts are just so good. But I mean, but all these rivers, do scouts really make that much of a difference? I guess they're slightly more efficient. This is a lot of rivers. Like, I mean, a lot of rivers. Let's let, let's get some Akichita. And we'll see where we go from there. And we will open with pottery, because that does give us access to the Mequap. You definitely want to be looking for a Golden Age as the Cree. Uh, the Mequap is our unique building. We should also talk a little bit about like the Cree's bonuses. The first thing is favorable terms, outgoing trade routes grant plus one food to pound maker per camp or pasture at the destination and trade routes sent to my cities grant plus one gold per camp or pasture at the destination. So we definitely want to settle a city near lots of camps and pastures and then send trade routes to them. We also get a free trade route and trader uh, when we unlock pottery, which is the first thing that we're going to be researching, which also unlocks the meek map. And uh, traders will claim tiles that they walk over within three tiles of a Cree city, uh, which is quite handy. We also, yeah, the, the meek map is a pretty powerful basic building. It allows you to turn flatland tiles into highly productive tiles. It also gives you lots of housing. Generally, the Cree uh, is a very flexible civilization. They're kind of a sim city, very strong gold generating civ. They have a lot of flexibility when it comes to what they can do. They can generate a lot of gold. They can generate a lot of growth. They can generate a lot of production. I'm already seeing... Uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> uh... Uh... Everything can flood. Excuse me? <laughs> Uh, I guess this is a science game, specifically because we need to get flood barriers. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right, we did meet Yerevan first. So that's an extra plus one faith per turn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I think this might be my, my new favorite map script in the entire game. 
Uh, I don't think we're ever going to play a different map script. Perfect. So we got the Akichita. I think I might go like Settler Builder Monument. Settler Builder Monument. Seems like a fun opener. That's kind of where my head is at. We could also go Akichita Builder Settler Settler Monument, which is this would be like a little bit more of a standard opener. It's a risky opener. I'm going to go double scout into builder, into double settler, into monument. I think that's like, that's kind of like a slightly riskier opener. But the Cree scouts have some power in the sense that they tend to be able to move through the terrain a little bit easier. Um, I'm not joking, by the way. Literally every tile on this map is flooding. Um, we are in a water world. I did not know that this was possible. I'm actually scared to trigger. I am scared to trigger it. Oh, we do. We can't get an envoy from trading with Yerevan here. Uh, I'm, I'm scared to trigger the flood because I'm worried that, like, it will actually break my game when it happens. Like, global warming will end the... Like, this is literal water world apocalypse here. Like, break out the Kevin... Was it Kevin Costner was in that movie, Waterworld? You know, you know the movie I'm talking about where, like, everything was wet. <laughs> Sounds like Friday night at your mom's house. Oh, yeah, baby. I apologize. Your mom is a special lady and I shouldn't be, uh... I shouldn't be saying untoward things about her. Yeah, I do want to clear this camp, but I got to wait for the, the plus five combat threat with fighting barbs in order to make it happen. I'll take this. And I already have the faith to get a Pantheon, so we'll take production now. I think we don't need the God King. I mean, we're already cranking out. Can I buy a builder, actually? Nah, I won't be able to buy a builder for oh, quite a while. I think I will try to fight this scout a little. Try and push him away from my borders, because I think getting scouted here would be super bad for me, because I'm going fast builder, and I have a trader out on the board too so i definitely need to suppress uh barbarians in terms of my next civic i have code of laws i feel like this build lends itself towards going towards state workforce early because we are building a builder and we plan to improve three tiles i'll want to step away from irrigation once my well i guess it might line up a little bit closer it depends can i get this kill not quite we'll take one turn to heal although i could attack and promote but the problem is if i attack and promote and then i Barb spawns and he attacks me, then I'm in trouble. In terms of Pantheon, uh, Lady of the Reeds and Marsh. Let me just let me just do a quick search here. If I type in Marsh, uh, that's a lot of Marsh. <laughs> oh, uh, perhaps Etamanenki could have been in our radar here. Lady of the Reeds and Marsh feels really strong on this map. Gonna be straight up here. Uh yeah, yoink. Uh that's mine now. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, necessary purchases uh, in terms of Pantheon. Bro, like, look at these tiles. It's turn 17 and I have a 3-2 tile in my capital. You're not even working it? Why aren't you working it? Thank you. I could buy more of these tiles. Do I buy more 3-2 tiles? No, I, I think... Well, I already have my Pantheon, so this tile is kind of redundant. So focus on food and production, baby. Uh, I'm not even sure. <laughs> this is not... I'm Like, we, we're off script now because I, this is not what I was expecting from this game. We did get plus one Envoy, so we can immediately get Suzerainty of Yerevan. Which kind of maybe points in a religious direction, although I don't know. I think in order to survive the incoming flood, <laughs> uh, we're going to have to do some shenanigans. I really hope that she settles like on one of these two tiles. I hope she doesn't keep coming towards me. That would be upsetting. Can I levy Yerevan? No, I would need 200 gold. I was thinking of levying Yerevan and like attacking her units to make her life harder. I think I can attack safely here now. As long as a barb doesn't spawn, I'm good. I'll take the battle cry promotion, which will give it just general combat abilities and I'll be able to clear that barb camp next turn. Unfortunately, Okichita are not very good at clearing barb camps. They can kind of do it in pairs, um, but they're not really amazing at it. There's a barb camp clear. Feeling good about that. Okay, we found the... I, I really love how crazy this map is. I've never seen anything like this. Have you? Oh my god. My mind is a little bit blown right now. Ooh, how long bay? <sighs> Ooh, I wish I'd found that sooner. That does point me towards settling towards this. I need to think about... I need to think about what I'm going to do. Now, here's the interesting thing. I do believe that... Zoos give science to rainforests and marshes. So I'm thinking... Um, I'm thinking of a build in my capital that maybe kind of revolves around, like, jungles and marshes. Because there is a little bit of jungle around. You know what we need... We need a map mode, okay? I want make a clip of this and send it to the guy who makes these these map modes. We need like an, another map mode, and it's like the district map mode where we can click it, and it'll show you like if you put a campus here, it would be a plus two, and like it would just like color code each tile rather than having to scan. 
but I'm very, very intrigued by this, by this map. Uh, okay, Halong Bay is definitely something I would like to have control over. It's one of my favorite natural wonders. I have to kind of pick and choose where I want to settle this, though. There is, like, theoretically, like a really good holy site right there. Plus three, theoretically higher. Um, there's a couple of fish. I think the best spot for this city center would be on this Plains Hill. Uh, and then work the two Halong Bay tiles would be good. And then also we have a little bit of marsh around. Now, the downside is, I mean, there's good campuses. Let's kind of demark some good campus locations. And then a harbor there works with that campus pretty well. So what we want to look for is like trade route, then victory condition district, which is like campus. I know I've been doing a lot of science games recently, but I you, I need science to survive this apocalypse, okay? Don't at me, <laughs> okay? Don't at me about playing another science game. You tell me you would play this any other way. Now, there is something I hadn't considered, right? So we placed this farm. Boom. That boosts irrigation. Perfect. We do want to delete map tags. We boost irrigation. So now we can do plantation. And we have a tile. A respectable tile. It's a 2-1-2 two, two, two tile. Um, not, not, not the greatest thing ever. Am I going harbors or commercial hubs this game? It's going to look like I need to do both, actually. Maybe we settled the Halong Bay City later. We've already kind of gone in the direction of currency. So I'm thinking maybe pottery into riding into currency is a reasonable choice. Um, I would like to get like a block of cities. So one, two, three. So I could settle a city in here. Two cities in here would be ideal. Then maybe some kind of, I don't know, government plaza play. I, I'm not saying here's where it's going, but it's going in this area, the government plaza. If I was thinking about where the city would settle for like best defense and also in range, it needs to be one, two, three. It needs to be like on the edge. Both of these cities need to be within three tiles of this government plaza so that I can do the uh, the Omega, the Omega formation again. So if I'm thinking about the Omega formation, what needs to happen is all the commercial hubs need to be on river tiles. Okay, so the only place a commercial hub can't go is here. And then the campuses go in between. I mean, there is like, hold on, if we get rid of this city, we could do something weird, right? Hear me out, hear me out. I know this is like a weird formation, but it does guarantee really high adjacency and it essentially forms a muscle out of these three cities that is really hard to beat. It blocks off settling towards me. Potentially there's stuff to the north of me that I could take control of. I don't know if I like this as much as I like the coastal settle that we had going there. I think I think I prefer the coastal settle. This feels like it makes a little bit better use of the land. Um, you do need to be within... I think on dies here is okay. It'll get me truffles within range. Yeah, on dies here. That's an okay city. One, two, three. And then this city needs to scooch to the right one. So in terms of this configuration, this is starting to look okay. I would probably... The only problem I don't like about this is it's killing a lot of marsh like a lot of marsh. Let me see here. Is there, can I like shift this whole configuration? If I shift it down to the left, I cover, I don't cover a marsh and then I cover another marsh. If I move it one to the right, I, if I move it one to the left, I guess I get a closer to this city, which doesn't really work. Yeah. Yeah. I think I might just have to give up a few marsh here. I, this is so many marsh to give up though. I mean, it's most of my marshes, right? Like realistically, if we look if we look at the marsh map mode, okay, I'm hitting five marsh with this. There has to be another place to put this. And there just isn't. Do I give up the dream? Are marsh is really that important for me? I think if we shift this whole configuration down to the left one tile, I think this works slightly better. I do want to get rid of a campus here. This one. So this will be my capital's campus, and then this will be this city's campus. Where is your commercial hub going? One, two, three. It's probably going there. This preserves more marshes. It still kills three, but it leaves two more alive. It kills one less marsh to do this, but is that really worth it? Ah, oh, man, that's a tough, tough choice. I mean, I can eventually put an aqueduct here and get, like, really high adjacency. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about marsh tiles, is they do have a little bit of a time limit. Do they? They kind of fall off in the late game, so covering them up over the course of the game isn't the end of the world. So I think I think I will go back to the original configuration, but it was I think it was worthwhile to make the consideration. 
sometimes you have to just kind of go through things in your head, figure out what you want. Is it going to work? Um, does it fit into your game plan? And sometimes the answer to that is no. It just, just is straight up, no, it's not going to work. But this is a really good starting point for our empire's plans. And I, I like settling down to the left and to the down right early here. I think that, I think this, this is a good early game plan. I'm feeling, you know, I'm walking into this with my eyes wide open and I'm feeling confident. All right, there's our third kill getting us bronze working. I killed a couple of barbarians over here. I'm a little worried about this scout being in my way, but I should be able to kind of control where he goes. He's still trying to escape to his barb camp, but I have him under control now. And there he is, he's dead. Plantation online. I just need to get one more tile improved and then we have craftsmanship. Ooh, Sweden, you son of a Swede. How dare you forward settle me? I was really hoping against getting forward settled. This kind of completely cripples. Well, 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 well. One, two, three. It doesn't completely cripple my plans. It kind of ruins them a little. I think they still work. If I shift this city one tile to the left here and then keep this city here, it'll still be in range. The problem is the city needs to go both harbor and commercial hub. Although the city will be like uber growth on the coast. So maybe we can make that work. I don't know. We're kind of, we're playing it by ear here. I really also wanted to get some truffles under control. So a little bit of sadness over the that outcome there. It is to be expected though, when you're playing on DD, the AI gets a bunch of really early settlers. You, you, you're you just not going to get the pick of all the city locations you want, especially when you spawn this close to people. Even if it is, I don't even remember, what, what size map is this? Is it like standard? What is it? Like, yeah, it's an eight player map. So there's, there is good room. All right, we do have actually turtles over here. That's something worth considering. Drop the farm there. Thank you very much. That's craftsmanship boosted. We have two farm tiles in here, giving the city an extra housing. I'm a little bit concerned about Sweden's opinion of me. But I am hopeful that we will be able to make good tidings happen. And this might actually be a kind of weird enforced tall game because we just simply do not have the room to do anything but build a very small number of cities. Now, interestingly, Norcoping, Norcoping, um, is flipping independent. Ooh, I should have gotten a builder. I need to pick up, I need to pick up mining so that I can place a, um, place a meek wap. Now, where am I putting my meek wap? That's the question. Where is my wap going? If I, well, I could gold purchase a builder actually and not have to change. I could gold purchase a builder. And if I play the meek wap, that would get me up to 22 era score. If I capture this tribal village, that's 23 and a free recon unit. Maybe we can get more value from that. Hmm. So I would need two more era scores somehow. So finding like a natural wonder or clearing a barb camp within six tiles. We see one, two, three, four, five. So, okay. Plan, in, plan of action. Uh, get all of my Okichitas up to the northwest here to clear this bar barb camp. If I clear it in range of this settler that goes on this city, that will be within six tiles. That will get me the error score in conjunction with the Mequap. And that I, I think that should, should um, trigger my, um, my Golden Age. And getting an era one Golden Age, that's big poggers. Okay, okay. We're taking a little bit of damage on this guy, but that's good. That's his job. His job is to tank and heal. You're in position now to settle. My warrior is well out of position. How long do we have? We have 10 to 28 turns. The spearmen in here. So I settled this. Ooh, actually, error score from settling near Halong Bay. I don't even need to clear this barb camp anymore. We're fine. We're actually totally fine. We just need the meek wap now. And I can purchase a builder and get the meek wap. That's perfect. I'm thinking in terms of like the best position for meek waps. Here's a meek wap and here's a meek wap. These eventually become good. They're not good right now, but they do eventually become good. Uh, and then there's also, I don't know, there's like a few meek waps around here. These are like pretty reasonable waps, you know what I'm saying? Now, in this fresh city, the very first thing I need to go for is monuments. I need that culture growth. Make sure you're working these tiles. Focus, focus on the Halong Bay tiles. Also, I need to buy this other Halong Bay tile, which means I think this meek wap thing here won't go where it's going to go. Well, I think we can maybe make it work. It depends on how much time I have. That's the big thing. Question, can I sell my dies for upfront money? Never mind, we're good. I, I sell my dies for the money. 
I can now buy the Halong Bay tile. Boom, yoink, it's mine. And then we can buy the Miquap tile and our plan is secured. We will hit our golden age, easily hitting our golden age, by the way. Uh, so now we can return to writing and getting currency. So our, our goal here is to hit currency and get those commercial hubs going real early. Now, unfortunately, Dido has denounced me, so I'm a little bit scared about her contribution to the game here, but I can quickly chop out this settler and then pop it down here with this warrior. Ideally linked, actually, just to like simplify micro. Um, and then we can start on the monument in my capital here. And now we're like, now we're cooking with diesel. Now we're well on our way to our era one golden age, which is honestly, this is more than you could really ask for, is getting the era one golden age. I think if I attack here, I survive the counterattack. I think I survive the counterattack, right? I do survive the counterattack. He doesn't even counterattack. We take Ranger and then we wipe him. Ooh, actually not a kill. Interesting. So I'm going to hold off on the Miquap until I clear this Barb Camp. Because if I secure the Golden Age, boom, Golden Age secured. Without having to place the Miquap, I could just hold on to this builder for a little bit longer. Um, so that's like, that's perfect. That's best case scenario. We're We're doing amazing right now. I am shocked with how weird this map is, how well we're doing. It's kind of mind-blowing, actually. So I think our first governor is going to be Magnus, because a lot of these districts we have are, like, the first two are on forests. So I want to chop these forests to get as much production value as possible. So I think Magnus first is going to be the play here. Let's drop another settler. Boom. So she's a little bit happier that I'm dropping cities kind of technically on the coast. I You could have made an argument that I should have put it one tile to the right, so I'm actually coastal. But these are inland cities. Um, they're kind of coastal only in name. Um, monument first, of course. We'll keep this builder here to keep the city safe because there are a few kind of Dido units and there's also a few Swedish units floating around in the area. Um, and I'll get these Okichitas back to garrison my cities. Now, we have a problem. Houston, we need to get galleys. <laughs> uh, we have seven turns to get galleys or the city is dead. If... Yeah, that's what I was worried about. I was worried about the war deck um, and it came... I literally, I literally predicted this. So, what's our best course of action? Well, in this city, it's a slinger. A single slinger can hold the city against this warrior slaughter because they only have one tile they can attack the city and they'll be able to level up relatively quickly. This city is a little bit harder to defend, but I think I can do it with my scouts. Now, that galley is a game changer, unfortunately. That makes my life way harder than it ever should have been because it's going to absolutely crack my city wide open and now I'm sad that I spent my money. I needed to hold off on this chop until later, but maybe I just need to chop out units here. Um, let's switch to a GOG so I can chop out units faster. If I chop here, I lose a builder charge because he'll be able to step forward unless he pillages the scout. It really depends on what he decides to do. But it does get me a warrior a turn earlier than I otherwise would have it. So I'm going to go ahead and chop here so I can be ready to respond. If I move this guy up and to the left, he'll actually provide zone of control, which will buy me time. I think this city might be dead. I'm kind of sad if it is, because this is just like really unfortunate, like aggro from the AI. Um, the AI does not need to be this aggro. So I'm just going to spam warriors here for a while to try and get myself to be safe. This is, this is so defendable if I have a galley. That's the really annoying thing here. But the question is, is there enough loyalty here for them to consider keeping it? The problem is, if they take it, I can't get a galley to defend it. Oh, this is so frustrating. I knew the attack was coming and I had there was nothing I could do about it. I started preparing, like the turn I started preparing for the attack, she attacked me. Do I just get the kill on the warrior or do I, yeah, I think I just try to get the kill on the warrior. Maybe we can use archers to retake the city. Maybe loyalty will retake the city for me, unlikely, because she has a couple of cities in the area. Um, maybe grievances will help. I think I go for military tradition here now, so I can get flanking and support combat bonuses. So that's annoying, right? This is going to be an incredibly difficult city to retake without archery. So now there's no point in having galleys. I immediately switch to archery. And this is like an enforced early game war, which is one of the worst case scenarios for me. It's like my least favorite way to play the early game is like just being dragged into a war that I wanted nothing to do with. She even has positive loyalty in here. It's not very positive. That's the one thing going in my favor. And I will be heading into a golden age and she will not be. I presume on that front. So I'm hoping to bait this warrior forward into this marsh tile. So if I position my troops correctly, I hopefully he sees this slinger and wants to come around these units to try and attack it so the slinger can like fight from across a river on a hill. More slingers are coming. Let's get into PP Kesis to defend it. We're going to need an archer garrisoned here, popping that city every single turn. Not exactly the fight I was looking for, but 
Everything is looking okay. We're holding. We have slingers coming. So I think this is just like a hold formation order right now for me. Yeah, I hate this. I hate this early war stuff that I always get dragged into. It feels like every game now I get dragged into an early war. I mean, I can turn it to my favor. Yeah, I need archery to take this. In my capital, how fast can I get a campus? It would be seven turns. It's not nearly fast enough. It could be worth it to place it at least. Or how badly do I want those trade routes early? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was just, just played a little bit too greedy and now I'm being punished for it. I didn't even get to finish my monument in this city. This is really frustrating. This is a really, really frustrating position to find yourself in. Although, again, it's it's not game over, right? It's a, it's annoying. Yerevan, though, is doing work to defend. I think getting the suzerainty of Yerevan is giving me room. I need this galley out of the city in order to retake it. I need to push archers into very particular positions. I need, like, an archer here, an archer here, an archer here. So that's three archers I need, and I've got two of them built, well quote-unquote built already they're slingers right now so i'm gonna have to figure out how to get more gold nobody has gold nobody wants my diplo favor right now so the plays that we're going to be making are going to be a little bit slow um but that's okay we can level up these slingers and get some damage in did my trade route die yeah my trade route was murdered which is annoying there's a, there's a lot happening here that's really like just kind of obnoxious and it looks like dido is setting up for an attack as well which makes no sense because i'm very obviously prepared. Um, more settlers, I guess, is the move here. I mean, more military units aren't going to make a difference here. That's the thing. So I could go... Campus? Yeah, I'll go campus. Try to build up my economy a little bit while at war. Animal husbandry, perfect, and military tradition. So now we're a little bit better defended, because our units will give each other adjacency, combat strength adjacency. Ah, oh, God. He's coming for me, isn't he? It's gotta be. Dido's gotta be coming for me. Let's pick up the state workforce for the government plaza. She wants me to give that city. I'm not giving you the city. I want you to return it. If I can get her to give me the city back by, like, threatening and doing damage, I think we can make this war work for us. We absolutely need to close the gap here to prevent any more Dido units getting through. There's way too many Dido units around my capital already. Like, one, two, three. Um, no, thank you. You are not welcome. Get out. <laughs> that is the truth of the matter. Okay, perfect. We're fortified on the front line. Well defended. Ancient Era ends in two turns. And that will be when I will get the... I will likely get the gold to advance my slingers into Operation Recapture This City um, at the end of this era. So it's just a matter of fortifying and preventing any more troops getting into my borders. There's a promotion, that's good. Yerevan's doing work too. Battle cry. This era ends next turn. Yeah, this is a painful... Uh, I will not cede my city. You must give the city back to me. I don't think I'll be able to kill Sweden. I might be able to take Norcoping though. Norcopium? <laughs> Norcopium? Uh, okay, there's archery. And state workforce, perfect. So this is all kind of lining up where roughly we want to go. This is not the plan that I wanted to execute, but I do have my government plaza placed and I will finish that campus. I'd wanted to go free inquiry here, but I need to think about, can I sell? Diplo favor is not yet worth anything. I don't have that much faith, but I could use monumentality. No, there's no real luxuries I can improve. I think I'm gonna go free inquiry because my plan was commercial hubs. And I think my plan still is commercial hubs. So let's go free inquiry. Then we'll go foreign trade, early empire into political philosophy. That's the pathway. I need 180 gold. I can give away all of my gold per turn to make that work. I can also trade away like diplomatic favor at one gold per turn or like one gold thing. I think I can safely give up three gold here. Even two would actually do it. And then I if I if I if I give away two GPT to get raw gold and then I just sell off my diplo favor one point at a time to the AI. I think that'll let me get the 180 gold that I need to upgrade all three of my slingers and sort of take the fight to the to uh to Sweden. Right, boom, boom, boom. All three are upgraded. That's good. Keep those fortifications going. We got our monument and PP kiss kisses. Now is not the time to place campuses, but we can place campuses. And I will, because I can. Because I have nothing else to do with my production. If I look at what tiles are being worked, well, I can't look at what that, that, that city's working. Um, so I don't need... I don't need builders, I don't need things. I think settlers, honestly. 
an extra archer here, I think would make me feel very safe. Uh, let's grab... Well, I wanted to go Magnus first. Now I'm not so sure. I might still go Magnus Surplus Logistics first for internal trade. And I think that's an okay build. I'm going to go Internal Logistics Magnus first. So the archers have arrived. My warriors are going to start taking damage. Um, look at that. Plus four science on my commercial hubs. That, it, that was the dream. Let's start moving the archers into position to siege this city. We have a unit in position to capture it. All right, there's foreign trade. We have access to another trader. Ideally, I would have two traders out right now and we can begin the siege. It's a very slow and steady thing. Let's get the government plaza. Do not, uh, you're not getting the city. I'm not ceding the city to you. I'm sorry, it's just not happening. There is actually barbarian galleys arriving. There we go. Now we're leveling up archers and we're damaging the city. The city is under siege. In the sense, well, it's not literally under siege, but it's under attack. We need to do like a rotation. Well, you can actually take one more hit and then you'll promote. And in this instance, I think a battle cry promotion is appropriate. Let's keep hammering the city. Okay, slowly but surely, we're whittling it down. Uh, you will be taking the garrison promotion. I want incendiary so I could do more damage to cities. Promotion available. So we'll be doing promotions on a rotation rotational basis. I'm a little bit worried about this, but I think staying fortified is like kind of keeping me safe a little. No, I will not cede. I refuse. I refuse to give up this city. I refuse to have my build completely torpedoed by the AI attacking me. Land surveyors. So we do have access to colonization. We can settle better now. And um, we have our government plaza. That's helpful. I can now go to surplus logistics on Magnus and grab myself a trader to send to PP Kisses to feed that city and grow it much faster. I could also change my government. I don't have a reason to change my government right now. In terms of promotions, I could also go provision on Magnus. That doesn't seem very useful. I'm trying to think about what I would do here. Um, Pingala is always just like a good out. Pingala is just always, always, always like a good... If you're not sure where to get, Pingala is like a good choice, usually. I think you can tank one more turn, and so you shall. Continue to hammer the city, and we're continuing to pro promote our archers on a rotational basis. Now that you have your archer, it's two turns until you can start the work on your commercial hub. So we will uh, give you a, a couple of turns of investment into that campus. It doesn't really do a huge amount for us now, but over the long course of the game, it will be useful. I want you to fall back into a healing position. Continue to bombard the city. We get another garrison promotion. Yes, it's slow and steady. Um, but the steady part is the important thing, right? It is steady that so we can blast this back. Ooh, that archer there is actually really badly positioned for me. I didn't see it until I'd already fired. That's going to kind of ruin my plan here a little. She's not building walls in there. We do have access to commercial hubs now. The city needs to get this higher population. You need to build your commercial hub. Which commercial hub are we building first? Your build, like, so this city is building this one. You're building this one and you're building this one. So I need to swap this tile, come in here, place this commercial hub and then immediately begin construction of that commercial hub. And the goal here by building commercial hubs first was with the um, Free Inquiry Golden Age to get a bunch of gold early and also use trade routes to build up our cities. Um, so, you know, it was kind of like the opening build that I was going for and it got kind of, you know, the AI is a master manipulator in the sense that they're just really, really annoying. <laughs> so I want to do a rotation here like this so that they step up to here and I can step here. This city needs to come down in combat strength like fast. However, I am getting like, th th this is like a permanently ticking time bomb, right? Every turn I'm getting closer and closer to that second promotion, which gives me an extra seven damage to cities. The city's health is also ticking down over time. There's the Dido attack. We were expecting this and yet it is still a surprise. <laughs> Just how silly the AI is to attack me here. Um, this Dido warrior, is spooky, so I will avoid it. I don't want anything to do with it. Somehow I was able to move here and shoot. Okay, the city is now down to half health and vulnerable, potentially, to some melee attacks. This trade route wants to go to PP Kisses. I would like another trader, but I don't know if I'll finish it too early or too late. And I really wanted the Edamanike this game, but <sighs> trying to make that happen. There's just too much, too much happens in the early game. That's the problem that you run into. I do think a granary in my capital here is critical in order to get the seven population. If I get the seven population, I can place my commercial uh, commercial hub, which kind of puts puts me along the pathway that we've been going along this entire game. The spawning of an archer in this city is like omega bad, game ruiningly bad. 
and I don't have enough warriors in position to change it. Look at that. Five food, two production from this trade route. Dude, I, why are my why are my early games getting completely torpedoed by the AI every single time? Could you please just like find a way? Can I I'll give you literally everything if you just let me have my city back. I will give you literally. Literally everything. You can have it all. Like what what do you want? What do you want? Alright. We're we're attacking, we're killing. <sighs> how do I get the, how do I get her to give me the city? How do I get her to give me the city? Hold on. I get a big chunk of money. Then I talk to her. And I'm like, hey, listen, this just isn't working for you. I'm not ceding the city. I refuse I will never cede the city. This is like a point of contention here at this point. I'm never giving you the city. You're never getting it. I will give you anything else but the city. All right. All right. It's going to be one of those games. It's going to be one of those games. We know. We knew. We knew. We knew. We knew one of these games was coming. One of these games is always on its way. It's always, it's always on the way. You know the AI is just going to colossally mess you up. And it was really like, it wasn't like I didn't know it was coming. It was just I didn't have time to prepare for it. That was the only problem here is, uh, is I noticed too late. I was a little too greedy. So we'll just take our time to heal up a little bit. Now, that's not a hill tile, is it? No. But I can get a melee attack in here, which is quite good. Need to retreat as do you, because you're about to get shot. If you scooch out and this archer steps out of the city, I'm in a position to double hit him and potentially kill. It all depends on what this archer here does. How is my city taking this much damage? No, I will not give you this city. It's not happening. I, ref I will lose this game. I would rather lose this game than give you that city. That is where I'm at right now, okay? Don't F with me right now. Spearman fully protects the city. Galley completely protects the city, but it doesn't actually contribute to the war is the problem. Archer, I think, also protects the city. You step here, you step here. We kill this archer with three shots. There you go. I look for more money. <laughs> oh, this AI. They have found a way to trigger me. I am triggered. I am really angry. <laughs> I will not be beaten, though. I will not be beaten. No, this warrior needs to die. Okay, we're killing. We've killed so many units. This is so annoying. I am so <laughs> oh, oh, you won't beat me, AI. Not today, baby. Not today. Oh yeah, kill a unit. That's okay. That's okay, we can lose a unit. I'm fine. I'm fine with losing a unit. Are you fine with losing a unit? You really need to think about that one. Let's shoot you. Attack here. You might get a kill. That's okay. I'm willing to live with that. I'm willing to live with that. Maybe. Unless I shoot here, and I shoot here, and I shoot here. And then I get you to continue to chase. And then what do I do? I come here and I kill you. Aha. Uh -huh. You fortify. You're going to get hit by three units, but that's okay. Because we have massive archery batteries ready to counterattack. One, two, three. Yeah, like we expected. No, I will not give you the city. No, you don't want it. You don't want it. Okay. Listen. Forever. I was built for Forever War. Okay. I was born in the Forever War. I will, I will burn my empire to a cinder just to make sure you get nothing from me. I, that is that is the level of anger that I have reached right now. <laughs> okay. All right, let's grab incendiaries. We want to take promotions where they make sense. We also need to be careful, though. We can't just, like, promote willy-nilly. We need to, like, reclaim tiles to prevent multiple attacks on this city. So, like, reclaiming tiles is important, as is increasing the combat strength of our cities. That was expected. It's okay. You have a promotion in the bank, and I will take that promotion. Let us shoot the galley. Okay, guys, you you guys need to go home. Like, stop. Stop. Like, this is too much. This is too much effort to try and kill me this early into the game. This is too much. Too much too early, okay? Maybe. Maybe later on in the game, this would have made sense for them to do. I don't even know what I researched now. I think we just go straight crossbows and pray. So, you know. I'm going to get started on some settlers to try and rebuild my empire. Okay, look, you want a forever war? You can have a forever war. It's going to happen. All right, I'm going to go for autocracy here. Well, no. Oligarchy. I think it's necessary for me to go oligarchy. As upsetting as that is, I need to take inscription for the extra gold. And then I need to get the great, ge great general points. If I can generate a great general, you know what? It's pretty good. It's pretty good if I can get a great general. Take me 30 turns. <laughs> you guys thought you could pull a fast one on me, eh? You thought you could do... 
some cheeky things which try to ruin my day. Well, let me tell you, okay? I am the master at ruining my own day, okay? I will think myself into a depression faster than you could blink if you think you had a chance of taking me on at my own game, all right? You, there was never a chance for you. Hold on. <laughs> uh, okay. No, give me, give me my city back. I will give you literally everything. Just give me my city back. <sighs> this is, this is honestly, this is like, this is like when you're playing a board game with your friend and you know, if you keep attacking him, you'll lose, but it's not about winning anymore. It's about the principle of the fact that he like surprise ward you or whatever. It's like, I don't even care about winning. I'm beyond that. Now, my problem is here. I need, I need you to like crit this guy and like kill him. Okay, we didn't get the crit. Can I get the kill on this archer here? I may have to accept a dead archer here. I can't retreat to the left with this guy. So, so let me explain what's going on in my mind. There is nowhere that I can move this archer to keep them safe, okay? Because this archer needs to die. This archer can shoot here. I need to shoot this archer twice. Well, this, this attack here makes sense, right? I attack here. That just makes sense. But the problem is I don't have enough damage anywhere else on the map to make sure this archer here dies. I can kill this archer with two shots, but then this guy is left with a warrior to attack them. I can kill this warrior, but then this guy, then I can't kill that archer. So I think the best thing I do is I step you back with a promotion, garrison, and then I step you to the right, because you do have garrison. So there's like a very, very small probability that you live based on your positioning. Um, and then I get this Kree uh, Akichita to lower the health of this unit enough for them to consider retreating it. I think that is the best way to navigate this battle. And in fact, it actually kind of worked out in my favor because they attacked the Akichita. So, you know, this is this is a pointless war. Nothing is being achieved here. OK, this is this is like when you're like, look, look at Norway. Look at look at Eleanor. OK, <laughs> this is the most pointless war I've ever fought in my entire life. Nothing is going to be achieved from this. Like Dido can be peace. Just like Dido is not willing to trade me peace, even though we have equal military. And I am like outstripping her in terms of units killed. Um, this is this is like the AI just irrelevant warring me straight from the start of the game, um, which is not a vibe, by the way. This is like the anti-vibe. No matter how much they throw at me, I think I'll be able to defend this. Uh, it's interesting that this pig has a little bit of science on it. Uh, scientific pigs, you heard it here first, folks. Why won't you do this? Why won't you just, why won't you re refuse? I don't know why she won't give me my city back. Um, you need to promote in order to survive in case this archer steps forward and shoots you. I also, I think I need to shoot this guy in order to kill him. And then we, uh, we definitely want to take the promotions here if we can. We want to shoot their archer first. This guy's probably dead if I don't step him back. And so I will step him back. And my front line is just very, very clogged at the moment. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to unclog it. I mean, I keep getting distracted by the gameplay, but of course, that's, that's half the fun, you know? <sighs> Of course, there's a second archer there. There's always a second archer. Yeah, well, you know, there's always a second archer. Maybe you'll survive. You won't survive. You're dead. That's unfortunate. I thought there was only one archer. They must be just spamming archers out of the city. I refuse to give the city up. I, I guess we're playing the can we settle my way out of this problem <laughs> game now at this point. Like, can I escape the fate that I have like found myself in? I should really just give the city up. But it's about the principle of the matter now. I can't just let the AI take a city from me for free. Like, I just, I refuse to allow it to happen. Yeah, okay. That was a kill that I was expecting. There's catapults and everything coming for me now. Um, so I don't want to deal with the catapult. We do a little, we do a little trolling. I am getting like a monumental and absurd amount of kills, but I'm, I'm in a position to, to survive here. No, I want my city back. That, that this, you must give me my city back. You are not getting my city. This war will last forever. I will drown you in war weariness before I let you take that city. Okay. Let me just explain things, something to you. You're not getting that city for free. I don't, I don't think I should have to give up my city. That is my city. I built it. I earned it. Uh, man, I'm so sad. I'm so sad that my greed was punished. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and link this settler up. Now, thinking about how I survived this game um, with this Giga War, I think I could either go for two cities over here or one city over here. Let's see. We've got fish, fish, crab. We've got one freshwater tile. If I were to settle on the stone, that's pretty good. Like, let's kind of like think about maybe planning this city, right? Like, if I settled on stone. We've got a couple of meek maps. I've got an okay harbor. 
the problem with this settle is like what's the follow-up you know where's my campus going i don't see a reef nearby well there's a couple of turtles over there that's a little bit far away i think this is the city regardless yeah i think this is what we'll do here we want to we're going to space our cities out try to get maximum value i think i just need to get these settlers out into the world so i'm not going to try and do any audience chamber shenanigans okay we're killing more enemies i'm continuing to shoot here like i'm farming i'm farming experience let me tell you about my experience farm right now it is going well there are chariots coming i think i can kill this this archer can die well probably won't die but i can i can start start the pathway to, to killing dude i am actually like f the farm god when it comes to experience you've heard, you've heard of rap god welcome to farm god Okay, I lost suzerainty of Yerevan, which hurts because it's been levied against me. How dare you use my own city-state against me? I think what I would like to do is to wait until I can plug in Diplomatic League. How close am I to getting a great general? We're not too far. It might require a little bit of finagling. Of course, there's a scout over there. I'm so glad I escorted this, this settler. Normally I don't, but I decided to not be greedy today. Like, sometimes I wake up. And like, you know, the same way that you choose violence when you wake up. I, wake, I woke up and I chose greed today and I was punished for my greed. And now I have, I have, I've stepped away from the greed. The greed is no longer the pathway that I wish to follow. Ooh, I could take emplacement and that would get me one step closer to expert marksman. I think I will take emplacement. That gets me a step closer to marksman. The step closer to double shots. Early game double shots. Very, very difficult to stop. Also very, very difficult to stop uh, double shots when you're on a night out. Be careful with the double shots, guys, okay? Know your limits. Don't overdrink. It is possible to overdrink. Uh, yeah, we're heading to a dark age, which is, like, criminally painful. Um, because this was a crisis that was forced upon me that I, you know, I shouldn't have had to suffer. But that is okay. I will accept my fate. Dude, I have actually murdered all of Dido's units. Could I attack Dido? Pog. I just want my city back. That's all I want. I, ju I just, I just want my city back. It's all I want. I just want my city. I, ooh, I accidentally attacked the scout. Whoops. <laughs> Whoopsies. My bad. Yeah, a little, uh, little, little poggers. Oh, this is very not pog. I don't now. Hmm. This warrior needs to die. So that means. As many attacks as possible need to hit him. And then the spearman needs to be punished for, you know, existing in my general vicinity. Of course. Like, is there any other way to live but punishing everyone who, like, gets remotely close to you? Uh, hashtag too real. No, I will not give you my city. Peace me out. Pe take take everything I have. Just take every... I don't, like... You, 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 just won't give, give me my city back. She's building the Kilwa in my face. <laughs> in my city. In my city, she's building the Kilwa. This is not a vibe. This is not okay. And it never will be. Spearman, welcome to hell. Okay, good step. We have managed to kill the Spearman. Uh, we did get the market in here. Let's get the trader. Trader? My empire is in shambles. How did you, I don't know how you teleported over there, but I will accept... Oh, there you... Oh, there's multiple scouts wandering the straits. I, the second somebody gets caravels, this game is a reroll. I'll be real with you. <laughs> the, second, the second I see a caravel, I'm alt f 4 uh, emplacement, yes. We must fight cities. Okay, there's a catapult. The catapult's in like an awkward spot. It can't really do much to us. We can continue to farm XP off of this uh, boat, though. I'm getting 5 XP a pop, which is pretty poggers. Trade route to the capital. 5 food, 2 production. Get that city growing. We can finally settle down. This bad boy, you go ahead and take commando for plus 1 movement. I really want walls in here, but I don't think I need walls. Come on. Refuse deal. How dare you? We got to shoot this. Oh, gentle eruption. Uh, okay. Catapult. Can I kill the catapult this turn? Yes, but it will take all of my shots. I mean, this is great. I'm like severely hindering the two players around me while I'm still getting settlements out. So it's not like the worst thing in the universe for me. It's just that this is like really pointless. <laughs> like there's no benefit for me killing this many units. I, I get very, very, very little out of this. I mean, I have, like, the, the most advanced military in human history in terms of, like, experience. Like, I have, like, the Omega Delta super soldiers 
the Super Saiyan soldiers? What, whatever, you know, phrase you want to use here. It can be funny if games and recreation, not that it matters. Um, let's thwap, 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 step, thwap. Okay, we did a bunch of damage. We're fine. I don't know where these scouts keep going. They're like so fast. Thinking about tomorrow. Uh, city. Harbor. And then a campus. In that order. Painfully, painfully and painstakingly, we trudge our way towards victory. I, do you know what's the, incredibly depressing? Is I didn't even really get to take advantage of my of my golden age. Yeah. Uh, God, there's so there's a there's a part of me that just wants to reload back to just go back in time and to the to the part where this was this game had potential. You're gonna get two shot if you stay there. Link up with you, and then we'll go settle this bad boy. Keep getting settlers. Settlers is the most important thing I can get right now. Okay, <clears throat> the dark age. Ugh. I hate the dark age. I hate it. I hate. I hate. Well, we do have harbors now, um, and we will place the harbor in this city. There's all of these are like plus threes, I guess. This one here. This one here. Sure. Promote incendiaries. Like we are ready to take on cities if we can get if we can get crossbows. We are ready. And I am gonna like try to be quote unquote beeline. I'm I'm quote unquote beelining crossbows here. This catapult 100 percent needs to die. And if I get enough damage on it, it is dead. Uh, my dedication will be a dedication to your mom. Thanks, bro, bro. You're defending this trade route that I'm eventually going to be putting there. Your delegation is welcome. An archer stepped up. Oh, he stepped out and he's going to get stepped on. I would like the trade route. You know what? How Harald can have my trade route. And I would like 50% fewer grievances for me. I want, I want to be able to make my enemies suffer. Okay, so Harold got it. I'm the chosen player. It, it, it didn't. It, I didn't win both. Basically, is, is the important piece of information there. Um, you step, you step, steppy, steppy. I'm scared to look forward in case there's bad guys. Okay, there's the trade route. We'll put that one over here. I'm gonna want another trade route for my next city. So we're continuing to just try to develop an empire that's capable of like doing literally anything. No, the city the city isn't up for it's not up for debate. I will literally stay at war with you for the entire game, Sweden. You are not getting my city. It's not happening. I, I will sit here and fight every single turn of this game. I I am that guy. I will be that guy. It's I it's no problem to me. In fact, I enjoy it because I know you hate it. I, I know the AI doesn't have like emotions, but still. This would actually be a great map to be Norway. It's been a long time since I've been Nor Norway. And I'm kind of, I feel like I'm due. I'm due. Okay, there's no, there's no archer in the city. That's big poggers. That's huge poggers. So we want to trade with the capital. Five food, two production. Now this city is on freshwater actually. So the, the extra growth will help a lot. Another city state declares warn me. My favorite thing. These are all my favorite things. I'm never getting a great general, so we're coming in here and we're unlocking this and we're getting uh, urban planning for production. That extra tiny chunk of production will help. You know what? I'm gonna step back a tile. I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna let that guy come a little closer. We have an enemy catapult at the gates, and it must die. Now my military is way better prepared for an advancement here, if I so choose. I have two envoys in the bank. I would like to take suzerainty of Mogadishu. Dido. How do you feel about peace? For some reason, Dido just will not peace me out, even though I have killed every single unit that she's thrown at me. Ah, she has crossbows now. Okay, well that changes things. Okay, yeah, crossbows change things, but they don't really change things. Like we, we're still, we're still the same guy. So what we'll do here is we'll step you back across this river. Both of these archers are going to advance on the city. This archer is going to advance and shoot this guy. You're going to shoot this guy. That's him dealt with. The catapult here is a little bit worrying if he steps into the city and then doesn't like, or if she doesn't, if she decides to just keep shooting at me with it, it's not good. Um, let's go ahead and found a city. Boom. Feels good, man. Let's drop that fat harbor in here. Boom. Then go straight for the monument because we need that culture. She still wants peace. I just, I want my city back. I'm not giving you the city for free. It's not happening. Uh, so really? Ah, I can choose to target the catapult here. Ah, uh, no, I can only choose the galley. That's unfortunate. I need to take out the catapult behind me because it will do damage to me if I let it live. 
the archer needs to reclaim the city so that I can thwap these crossbowmen that are advancing on me. You need to stay fortified to tank and you need to step up and start attacking the city. I think... I don't know if I would say we're stabilized, but at least the crisis, the crisis has lessened slightly. The, the crisis has reinvigorated. She, she has crossbows now. Jesus Christ. How long am I from crossbows? Eight turns. I'm 20 turns from crossbows. Here's the thing. If I keep my archers alive, I win this war. That's the thing. If I keep my archers alive, I win this war easily because my archers will eventually become crossbowmen and my crossbowmen will eventually like just break the world, okay? So we're going to have to do a little bit of finagling, a little bit of switching around, a little bit of careful navigation. You know, you got to be a nimble navigator, like a centipede, a glorious centipede. Why do I, I don't remember, what is that even a reference from? That's like, that's from the depths, dude. I don't even remember what I was referencing there. That's an old, old meme. Like that feels like it was eight years old. Oh my God, that was like, that's like a meme I dredged from the depths of my own psyche. So let's, let's be a nimble navigator. Like I said, we'll kind of step around, do this. There you go. All right. We've got things under control. You know, we're just, it's a forever war. You just, you got to keep playing the game. You're in a forever war. Get a little bit of extra science from Pingala. Shave a few turns off of machinery. What are we down to now? If I kind of switch it around. There we go. Five turns and nine turns. Now we got to save cash. We need cash money. Uh, normally I would go for feudalism, but how fast can I get mercenaries? It's going to take me a while to get mercenaries. Let's just go. Let's go feudalism, I guess. No, let's go. Military training. No, no. No, no. Remember, remember when I played this game for fun? Does anyone remember those times? Remember when Civ was a fun game that you played with friends? I, rem I, I remember, okay? I am, I am killing everyone on my continent. You know what? Even you, France, I know you didn't do anything wrong. You're getting killed. This is, this is the war game now. I, have, I am pissed off. My people have been pushed around for... I, count the turns, okay? Count them. Now, if we're looking at the city of Atkakoop... I need, let's see, the granary will come in use very, very quickly. However, we don't have enough tiles to justify working at granary, I don't think. Well, you know what? We actually do. If I get the granary, it'll allow the city to not only grow faster, but also work more tiles, which means more production, which means I get my harbor faster. I get everything that comes after the harbor faster. So I'm going to go ahead and work on a granary. It's rare that I do this. But I think this is a situation in which going for the granary at this point in the game is a reasonable thing to do. You're not getting the city. You're not, you just, you're, you're not getting the city. It's not happening. I don't care how many crossbows you throw at me. Now, I do have to be very, very careful here. I need all of my archers standing on defensive terrain. And my weak archers need to be, like, super far back. This trade route can go to my new city to give it an extra little boost. You're in a scary spot, but if you stand here, no one can step to you and shoot you, I think. Or, actually, I can take volley on you and then you're protected. You're safe because you're standing on a you're standing on a district, which gives you plus 10 combat strength. You're you're fine. You're basically a crossbowman on the defense. Uh, we got our trader in here. This city also could use a granary, like the minus five. Oh my God, the minus five amenities from war exhaustion. I do think that I could justify an extra archer or two. They're relatively cheap yet cost effective or well actually what i really need in here is gold i need as much gold as possible let me think about this i'm pretty sure a crossbowman upgrade is like 250 gold so there's a crossbow upgrade i just got there okay um let's work on the campus let's go for long-term returns on investment crossbow is stepping up okay i'm feeling like pretty safe right now these are just things I say in order for the universe to like turn it around on me and murder me. I hope you appreciate that, that I say things that are like, oh, I'm feeling confident and safe. Just, just to try to encourage the world to like screw me over. That's the, and I do that for my audience, okay? I suffer for you guys. That is, that is, that is the number one objective here. Now, this crossbowman, depending on where he walks, can be done serious damage. Nice, we're killing the scouts. Now, she thinks she has like a tech advantage and she does, but you, you have to be smart enough to capitalize upon a tech advantage it's not enough to just have a tech advantage because if i roll high here <sighs> rolled low but she either has to retreat or promote and then i'll get the kill um, you go there you go there you go there uh, that was not the order of operations that i meant to do but that's okay we'll make it work so there's one more city over here let's go yeah, let's get our library up no point getting my government plaza buildings because i'm not getting much value out of them 
make peace? No. You give me my city back and I will make peace with you. That is literally the only line in the sand that I'm drawing. Now here we get to do something fun. Okay. We get to kill this crossbow. We get to advance heavily upon this crossbow. No matter where that crossbow goes, we're going to be in position to do some serious hurt into it. And we need to be in position to do some serious hurt into it. We're positioning ourselves for glorious combat here on the left. Dude, this is <laughs> this is like a survival game. It's not even a, a normal a normal game of save. Okay, so things have developed in a very interesting way. I think what we will do is step you here. You step into the city, provide a combat strength. We want to kill this guy. Also, I want to promote him. So that's a little bit difficult to not be able to do both. Best case scenario here is a retreat. But it's a very particular type of retreat I have to do. So... You absolutely have to step forward and shoot this archer. You absolutely have to step this way, like so. And then you absolutely have to step here so that you get the district defense. And now my units are protected from crossbow aggression. So there's like, there's like a, I, I, basically this crossbowman was going to step forward and kill some of my archers. And so I had to kill this archer to make sure that neither of these units could be killed by a catapult plus crossbowman shot. This guy is still under threat because he's pretty low on health, but he does have the garrison promotion. So he's like, he's relatively safe. It's not perfect, but he might survive. There's like a lot that goes on to. Yeah, there's a step forward. Ah, damn, I was really hoping that that wouldn't happen. However, this crossbow has stepped forward into the danger zone and I can do a doom cycle like this and like this and get the kill. Okay, kill acquired. Major defeat. So losing an archer hurt, speaking of, let's get, let's see if we could squeeze out an extra archer before, before we go to crossbows, I think. We'll get an extra two archers. It's just, it'll be good to have spare units. Okay, there's the damage, but we survive. Perfect. We're refusing. I know, she looks confused. And that is the objective, is to leave her dazed and confused. You can step back and take the garrison promotion. You step down. We need to kill this spearman because he's putting this archer under threat. And then the quadrireme is a problem. However, we do have now a unit with double shots. So that's, this is like incredibly important unit to keep alive because it has double shot. You need to step away in case there's a crossbow in the fog of war. Being coastal would be ideal here. There's a nice harbor and a decent campus in this city. So all in all, we've managed to survive. I mean, the, the science, the, the, the game winning situation is getting worse over time. Um, I would really like to get a galley to explore the world. I need more info. More info will give allow me to make better strategic decisions. Like if there's land over here to my north, maybe there's some islands out here. There could be like a whole continent over here. I mean, like I'm seeing city states, so continent implications are kind of, you know, going through my mind. Now, the great thing about archer double shots is the fact that they shoot twice, which means they get twice as much experience. I know I'm like essentially repeating myself. Now, this is a scary moment. This guy right here, he could step forward and shoot this archer who's not on a district and kill him. So I'll step the warrior forward to prevent that. And I'll try to get an extra chunk of damage in with my Okichita. This catapult needs to go down, but I have another expert marksman actually. So that's two expert marksman crossbows potentially under my control in five turns. That is a big development for my empire. So we got the granary in here, so the city is going to grow quite well. I do think it would make sense to go for a builder too. However, we are close to feudalism, but a qu I mean, we're 30 turns from feudalism. I think I'll go for a quick builder. Although here's the thing about a quick builder. Yeah, get those dies. I'll be able to sell the dies to the AI. Now we need to be careful. Uh, this is a double shot archer. However, we need to move this scout here. We need to move you down this way. We need to move you this way. All three of these guys need to shoot this crossbowman, and then this guy needs to also shoot the crossbowman, and then also the catapult. You have a double shot. So let's move you to the front line where you're ready to fight. We're very, very close to having the sort of crossbowman military power to actually like completely change the canvas of the game right now. This is this is a this is a gameplay style I haven't done since like the launch of the game, where you just you just go cr crossbow grind. And it's because it's like an incredibly it's it's an incredibly demanding gameplay style. Like mentally. You need to you need to be like 
moving units efficiently. You need to be like, doing things carefully. You need to be considering all sorts of different data. And so there's military training. We cannot make it to mercenaries in time, unfortunately. We just didn't get enough cities out before like the war came. Um, I will take this great merchant, though. I'll be able to get an extra copy of a luxury to sell to the AI. If I could get truffles, that would be ideal. So I'm going to move in that direction. Take a turn to heal up. We're three turns from our next... Uh, for, for the crossbow upgrade, so that's going to be good. I've got three envoys. I could take Susan to you of Mogadishu. I will. I'm Susan, right? Right? <laughs> uh, you want to... You want to give me info there, bud? What about, what about a levy your military? Catastrophic eruption. It's nothing got to do with me. Let's, let's clean up our map here. Right, we got to double shot these guys because we do want even more promotions on these guys. God, if I was the AI right now, I'd be feeling pretty spooked. Seeing what's coming in, what's coming in. Down the, down the pipeline for me um, in terms of military units. So I'm thinking double crossbowmen's push this way. And then you push to the north with backup of a fresh archer. A fracher, one might say. Get that kill right there. This just feels like I've made a very efficient and, and happy defense. Like I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with how this game has gone. Oh yeah, I gotta remember, always be placing your harbors uh, ASAP. Let me get those trade routes up. They're key. Especially when you're playing the Kree. I want those truffles actually. So I'll kind of position accordingly this quadrireme dies this turn which i'm happy about oh my god the end of turn bug <sighs> that's my favorite one all right you know sometimes you gotta redo a turn sometimes you gotta redo a turn that's your life um if you're if you're a civ youtuber that's your life a lot of the time okay <laughs> i have come to accept that my place in the world is to make content okay you know that the butter robot from rick and morty that's me except i make civ videos I have one purpose in this world, and it is to entertain you guys through my own suffering. I accept it. I I know my, like there is something freeing about knowing your place in the world. Like I'll be I'll be real with you. Now, of course, like you know, because you know, there's a quad dry room that we can take care of. A little bit of a map vote. Ooh, an aid request for Catherine. Let's vote that up. The reason we're voting it up is because uh, just sowing chaos. At this point in the game, winning is of secondary purpose to me. Uh, my win condition is obliterating every AI on my continent. Uh, so that's that's my personal win condition right now. Um, if I can achieve that goal, I'm happy. So let's go ahead and duplicate some pigs. And then we'll go ahead and sell those pigs for big fat stacks of cash. No one has any money. Okay, we'll take a little cash. Everyone is broke. I It feels like I'm in, I'm in college again. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, let's go ahead and clear this out. Okay, I, geez, I, I, stop giving me trade deals. I don't want them. And there we go. It's crossbowman time. What's that? Oh, they're 250 gold each. I can almost afford many. Uh, I can almost afford many crossbows. In fact, I can afford three crossbow upgrades, which does line up pretty well with the fact that I have this crossbow, this crossbow. And then what's my most experienced crossbow? That's an important question to answer here. That's 100, that's 104. I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference. So I'm going to go ahead and do this guy here. He's pretty experienced. And now this city is looking like it's in trouble. Can I garrison this for loyalty? What's the loyalty? Like minus five? Ooh, that's bad. I'll need a governor title. Where's my closest governor title there? That's not fast enough. I will have to try and get myself, I think, an audience chamber to get another, go another governor title. I don't, know, I don't even know where I go technologically after this. Like, I, it's just, it's baffling. Uh, the fact that I've been forced into this, like, cripplingly painful war, war game when I shouldn't have been. This should have been a peaceful, beautiful, wonderful session of love. Well, no, that's what I spend my time with your mom doing. This should have been just a fun game of Civ. Okay. Uh, we, got our, we got our basics in here. Campus. I don't even have bronze working. I can't wait. I do have bronze working. Oh, I can, I can get rid of campuses. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. I definitely want the granary because the city is growing and it can work, uh, getting the granary works more tiles. And then we'll go harbor into lighthouse. Um, so my economy is starting to build. Oh, okay. Now look at this crossbow damage. I do need to take a little bit of time to heal on some of these guys. The question is, do I do this? I do do this. And then you will hit this archer and leave this crossbowman alone. And then I can double shot you. Perfect. Catapult needs to die. Mission critical. Spearman needs to die. Mission critical. 
you need to heal at least one more turn. We got a builder in here, and I think our objective is to get another dies online and a meek map. This is the better meek map, so we'll go there. We could place our campus. Do we even have a good campus here? Probably not. Do we go for a different district then? I mean, we have our harbor placed. Um, I think we need our campuses. So, I mean, this isn't a very good meek map. It's not a very good meek map, but it's also a chop. It's a chop I can't afford to do. I'll place it later. Harbor first. We're sitting on an envoy. Can I take Susan of Mogadishu? Like, I don't know. I don't understand. I, don't, I have broken my game somehow. Very confusing. Ah, strange little desert oasis island thing. You're, you're not getting the city. You just, you're not. In fact, I'm taking your entire civilization to, to task for what you've done to me. Okay. I am on 17 signs per turn. And so help me God, I will burn your entire civilization to the ground. Okay, now this is where the double shot, we're, we're cracked. We're absolutely cracked. You move, you shoot, you shoot, you move. We're in position. I have Okichita's in position to retake the city. Now there's walls up in Norcoping. So we're going to have to hoof on some Norcopium. But don't you worry about that, okay? I've got plants. Uh, random, single, you can't even, I don't even think you can settle on Oasis. This is like so pointless. <laughs> what is this island? Okay, there's actually nothing. It's off. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no ocean on this map. It's very confusing. I love this. This reminds me of playing um, Age of Empires, Mega Random. There is a crossbowman entering the city. Now, there's already a warrior in the city, so maybe we can use our positioning and cleverness against them. So let's kind of like set up for a, for a good fight here. Uh, I think a friendship with her could work for a short term. At the very least, I could get like a delegation with her, get fit more favorable trade deals. Dido, how about peace, Dido? Dido just doesn't want peace. For some reason, every game I play, Dido just chooses violence and declares war on me and then will never, ever peace me out. I can't explain it. Okay, the crossbowman went into the city, which is exactly what I didn't want to happen because now it can shoot out of the city at my troops. 12 turns on that. And there's a crossbowman here as well. So we're going to have to play the gentle retreat game so how are we going to do this you step here 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 you're fully out ish is that a hill it's not a hill unfortunate you get killed so you're dead that's a, that's unlucky unlucky mathematics is on the way we got our campus loyalty is dipping here it's not good it's not good at all why is the production so bad focus on food and production Get a granary. Production is so bad because I have wavering loyalty and bad amenities. Uh, I wish someone would peace me out, man. I feel like this game has been torpedoed. She really wants peace, but she won't give me my city back. So I think I might have to just take peace soon. I don't know how much longer I can actually sustain this war because it's crippling me. I mean, I can sustain it for a little bit longer. <sighs> wavering loyalty. I can't take wavering loyalty. I hate having to reassign Magnus here, but it has to be done. The loyalty in this city is also terrible. These are all really bad. And now there's mounted arms coming and I don't have, I don't have like proper defensive units in position. The problem is like, I'm super powerful. I'm just like, I'm powerful at the wrong moment. Ugh, I should have moved towards there. I didn't think of the quad, quad room. You unfortunately will have to step like this. You can kill there at least. You're going to have to try and tank that. It's not going to work. Internal trade. This was like a really interesting map, but at the very least, I might get Morbus to like stitch the two episodes here together as a like intriguing single video and then call this a dead run because A, I'm not having fun and B, I'm not getting anywhere. Like I don't, I don't like, I could maybe like turtle this out and get somewhere. It would require me to find actual land mass though. That's the big problem I'm having. Like I need mass, I need land mass. Retreat to survive. Shoot to kill, shoot to kill. Seriously, where's my mass, dude? Got, low, got no land mass. I think you can give up that tile in exchange for good positioning on units. Get a plantation. Sell a luxury. Maybe get another crossbow. White piece, refuse. I just, on principle, I'm not taking that white piece. I've created my own disaster save. Maybe I should put this out into the community, like with this video. Like, hey, can anyone win this game? <laughs> Let's see if anyone can win it. That would kind of be a fun idea, actually. You know what? That's what we're going to do. I'm giving it. I'm giving out the disaster save. This time I am the disaster. 
which is kind of appropriate considering how the rest of my life goes. Bazinga. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, where is the land? I you, I need to I when I when I first made the save file, I uh I revealed the map. I didn't look around or anything. Like I had I had a little peep. But I but I just I peeped around a little. Um but I took a screenshot of it and posted it on Twitter. So I know this map is crazy. But I'm I'm officially checked out of this game. We're going to we're going to try again. We're going to try again. What in Tarnation Cree 2? Um is what we'll save this as and I'll post this like on my Discord or something. Um, but before we go, by the way, if you had planned to attempt to salvage this game, do not, and I repeat, do not keep watching the video because I'm about to spoil the whole map. Okay, let's, let's, let's use the developer tools, activate, we get to, oh, the Great Barrier Reef, Galapagos, a lot of my favorite wonders, actually, and Uluru. Um, okay. Oh, what? Actually, bro, if I had kept playing and found this continent with my Pantheon... This is a settleable island for me. Bro, look at this land, though. She should have spawned, like, another two tiles to the southeast. She's on two cities. Actually, Sweden's a problem. But I could kill Dido, maybe. Mm, nah. She's got 69 signs on two cities, which is A, ridiculous, and B, impossible for me to overcome. Bro, like, how do I break this? There's three tiles I can attack the city from. She has, like, easy access to defend from two angles. She effortlessly outmasses my army, despite the fact that I have built and maintained. Like I don't like. I wish I could look at the graphs right now, dude. There's so much empty desert land, bro. What happened to this map, dude? This is like may actually be the greatest campus. Like plus seven for free. There's a plus six right here. That's crazy. I love this map. I love this map. I just wish I had a little bit more room. Like why couldn't there be, like why couldn't France be like a few tiles to the left? Why couldn't Sweden, I mean, Sweden did start over here, I guess. Why couldn't Dido be a few... Like, I don't understand. Dido won't go to peace with me. Like, no matter what I offer. I'm going to chalk this game up to being just weird. Like, here's money. No, she won't take it. What, you want a city? I give you literally all of my cities and you might take peace. Like, her hunger? This is way beyond the scope of what she can actually achieve. Considering how many units she's lost against me... Uh, I want to hit the retire button, but I also want to hit the restart button. Let's hit retire. Uh, I want to. I want to look at these graphs, bro. Like, look at this number of combats. Where is it? Um, look at this. L literally every turn, my number of combats is skyrocketing. Where? Where's units killed? Units killed. Look, I'm killing units on a turn by turn basis, and it's still not stopping the AI. This is why I'm always baffled when people are like, "Oh, the AI, it's easy." There are situations that you can be put in through no fault. Well, maybe I was a little greedy. Through no fault of your own, where it's actually like you actually just cannot stop the AI. Look how few units I lost. I think in total this game, I lost maybe like four or five units. Maybe six at worst. Like literally, I have killed a, Greek, a, 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 a Swedish unit every single turn of this game for the last 80 turns. And it hasn't even put a dent like a dent in her army. Look how little science I'm dealing with. This is why this is why I'm always baffled when people are like, oh, deity is really easy. Yeah, it's really easy if you don't get any pressure or if you have really good luck. But de deity can be like really, really challenging. So I'm going to go ahead and upload this save file to the Discord and see what people think of it. I love you all very much. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.